Hello, thank you for joining me. This is a case describing a course of care for a patient, Mr. J.M., an ambulatory chronic stroke survivor. My name is Robert Palumbo, and I'll be guiding you through this case. Of note, written consent was provided by the patient, and I have no disclosures. This case is about a 71-year-old male patient with a history of chronic stroke resulting in left hemiplegia. The patient does have a history of seizure disorders, but has been seizure-free since October of 2019. The patient also has a history of brain cancer that is currently in remission. The patient was independent with household ambulation and limited community ambulation, but with the onset of COVID, has been requiring assistance for transfers, and is using a manual wheelchair for locomotion. He recently moved to a skilled nursing facility for increased assistance. Regarding the patient's status across the ICF domains, we note that he presented with left hemiplegia and spasticity, as well as noticeably decreased endurance. He was becoming less active and no longer felt safe walking without assistance. As a result, he had to move out of his home and into a skilled facility. Other factors of note are the patient's multiple neurologic conditions and his history of smoking. The patient did have notable beneficial environmental and personal factors, including consistent transportation and high motivation. We also note here the patient's performance on various outcome measures and mobility measures. These will be discussed in future slides. This video shows the patient's second attempt at walking in our clinic. You can see he requires minimal to moderate assistance to stand. And once walking, he requires contact guard and intermittent minimal assistance to walk. He has an AFO on his left leg to prevent significant knee buckling or knee hyperextension that was occurring during his gait. He also utilized a platform walker as he required heavy upper extremity support for balance and his hands quickly became fatigued. The patient also shows noticeable deficits in the propulsion and limb advancement components of gait. If we look at the patient's mobility further along but still early in their plan of care, we can see a more clear deficit in stance control at the ankle as the patient demonstrates significant inversion. In the sagittal plane, we would also note hyperextension at the knee during left stance, and we continue to see decreased cadence and limited limb advancement at this point in time. This slide notes the patient's initial scores on outcome measures and mobility assessments. We can see that the patient would be placed into a high fall risk category and be considered a non-functional ambulator. We can also see that the patient needs assistance with walking, and transfers and would be unable to do stairs at this time. Of note, Mr. JM had relatively modest goals at the start of treatment, mainly to assess DME needs and decrease caregiver burden. After the initial assessment and discussion of goals, Mr. JM was agreeable to trialing a treatment program focused mostly on walking. Our intervention selection was largely guided by the 2020 Locomotor Clinical Practice Guideline for ambulatory patients with chronic neurologic injuries, including stroke. We aimed to implement the CPG's first action statement, specifically providing gait training at cardiovascular intensities above 70%, age predicted heart rate max. We also considered resources beyond the CPG. We noted research in the chronic stroke population that suggests including stepping variability may have additional benefits. Further, Mr. JM wanted to improve his transfers. We knew there is evidence from the subacute stroke population that there may be transference to non-locomotor domains following focused stepping training despite not specifically practicing them. We hoped our patient would see a similar carryover effect. Due to clinic and patient availability, our plan of care was to see Mr. JM two to three times per week for hour-long sessions. We planned to see Mr. JM for eight to 12 weeks pending his response to treatment. 
He targeted intensity to be between 70 to 85 percent of his age predicted heart rate max. And again, we practiced walking in variable context. The following videos demonstrate examples of interventions we performed with Mr. JM. This video shows an initial session for Mr. JM. Here, we are cueing Mr. JM to take larger steps, challenging his limb advancement. You can see that while this task may not seem like much, Mr. JM is reaching his target heart rate of greater than 70% heart rate max. As his mobility continues to improve and we become more familiar with Mr. JM, we are able to more fully challenge multiple subcomponents of gait and also further drive his intensity. In these videos, taken just two weeks later, you can see that we are challenging Mr. JM's balance through the use of multi-directional stepping. In this case, both lateral stepping and backward stepping. We further challenge Mr. James' balance by using a straight cane rather than a rollator. And we again are challenging Mr. James' limb advancement with the use of a 10 pound ankle weight throughout all of his variable stepping. You can see in both of these videos, Mr. JM is well into his heart rate zone at 77 and 78% heart rate max. In this video, we decide to assist Mr. JM's balance with the use of a rollator. By assisting one subcomponent of gait, we can further challenge other subcomponents. In this case, we are again challenging Mr. JM's limb advancement with the 10 pound ankle weight, but we are also challenging his propulsion with the use of a band and therapist provided resistance. Mr. JM has to propel through the resistance in the forward direction. Treadmill training is another great way to drive intensity and challenge multiple subcomponents of gait. In both of these videos, the harness is set for catch only, providing no body weight support. The patient is then challenged in the balance subcomponent of gait by altering the upper extremity support provided. In the left video, the patient is challenged to use a handhold assist rather than grab bars. And in the right video, the patient is challenged to use a Swiss ball for upper extremity support rather than grab bars. We can see in both videos that we reach the patient's point of failure. From there, we can work at the patient's limits, backing off of the failure point just a bit and challenging the patient as best as we can. We can see that the patient met high heart rate goals here, achieving near 80% or over 80% of heart rate max for both of these sessions. Finally, stair training is a great tool for high intensity gait training. Oftentimes, even if a patient does not encounter stairs frequently in their environment, we use stair training as it drives intensity and can challenge all four subcomponents of gait. You see here that the patient has a 10 pound ankle weight on the paretic limb and is challenging limb advancement for each step he takes up the step. The patient is also naturally challenged in their stance support while ascending and descending the stairs, requiring increased motor control to eccentrically contract his muscles as he descends. Finally, the patient can be challenged in both balance and propulsion through variation in stair training technique. Upper extremity support can be adjusted to further challenge balance and multi-directional stepping can be used to step laterally or backwards up and down stairs. The patient can be challenged with speed trials and skipping steps to further challenge propulsion and limb advancement. Reflecting on our fit goals, we can see that we were successful in attaining our goal frequency for Mr. JM, 
On average, we were able to maintain an intensity within our targeted heart rate, and we utilized an intensive variable stepping paradigm for our desired time frame. Here, we can note Mr. JM's improvement in outcomes and mobility. Of note, we can see that Mr. JM improved a significant amount in all outcomes and made notable gains not only in walking and stairs, but transfers as well. This supports our thought that despite not practicing transfers, Mr. JM still improved in this domain after focused only on high intensity variable stepping practice. This is consistent with the skill transference literature previously alluded to. When we look at the patient's goals, we see that while the patient initially presented for power mobility, he is now a manual wheelchair user for long community ambulation and is utilizing a rollator within his apartment. The patient also wanted to decrease caregiver burden. After treatment, he is living with his son and wife, requiring supervision only for the stairs. The patient initially hoped to be able to stand independently and was unsure of walking. Now, he is independently standing and transferring to his wheelchair or rollator and is able to walk in the apartment, no assistance required. All these improvements allowed the patient to leave his assisted living facility and return to an apartment with his family, a goal he was unsure was even possible at the start of our plan. Mr. JM had planned to return to further improve on his gains, however, due to unrelated health complications, has been forced to put therapy on hold for the time being. This video at discharge demonstrates the significant gains the patient has made during his time in the clinic. He is able to stand and then walks independently with his rollator. You notice that his left leg takes a few steps to get full lower extremity clearance. This is because the patient is utilizing a Bionis device, which provides stimulation to assist with dorsiflexion during limb advancement. The patient decided to use the Bionis device at home as opposed to an AFO as he was able to don and doff the device more efficiently. Overall, the patient has improved cadence, longer step length, and requires less assistance to ambulate. Thank you for taking the time to hear this case. Hopefully it provided an example of clinical reasoning when implementing high intensity gait training. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you.